Hello and welcome to the second of two tutorials on certs. In the previous tutorial, I briefly uh, recapped the idea of rational and irrational numbers that were covered in much more detail in the videos on numbers. Um, we talked about the definition of thirds, particularly uh, square roots of positive integers. Um, and we covered um, multiplying thirds and also sort of going in the opposite direction of multiplication, which is decomposing or deconstructing the square root of a larger integer in terms of smaller thirds, or in some cases, the product of an integer with a third, if one of the factors of the larger number was a square number. So that's just a, a brief summary of what we covered in the last tutorial. Here, I want to then briefly talk about addition and subtraction of thirds, briefly talk about division of thirds, and at the end I will just mention um, higher order roots like cube roots and fourth roots and so on. Right, so let's consider addition of, I can't spell, addition of thirds. An unstable start to the tutorial. I can't write and the paper's wobbling, so apologies for that. Well, it's going to sound a bit silly, but the um, good way to think about this is to think about apples and pears. So if you just, um, if you just uh, give me your patience for a moment, if we have to add two apples together, then of course we would just say, well, an apple plus an apple is two apples. And likewise, we would say, well, a pear plus a pear is two pears. But then if somebody asked you, well, what is an apple plus a pear? Then there's no simpler answer to that question. An apple plus a pear is, well, it's just an apple plus a pear. You could say it was two pieces of fruit, but you wouldn't be able any more specific than that. And this is precisely the idea that you need when adding thirds together. So if we ask, what is the square root of two plus the square root of two? Well, think of apple plus apple. We have two lots of something, and the answer is just two lots of root two. And the square root of three plus the square root of three Again, something plus another one of its own kind is just two of those, so it's just two root three. However, the square root of two plus the square root of three is like trying to add an apple and a pear. These numbers have the simplest representation that they can have. They are different. There is no way to add them in any meaningful way. You could convert them into actual decimal values and add them, so there will be a, a decimal answer to this, but there's no symbolic way to write this addition in a simpler way. So, in other words, the simplest way you can write it is just the way it's been given to you, the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. And the same would be true um, for subtraction, that there's no simpler way to write the square root of 2, take away the square root of 3, then, as in that question itself. Now, the sort of slippery exception here, which you will likely to be examined on, is being given additions which look like, at face value, you're trying to add apples and pears, but which actually are examples where you're adding apples to apples, but it's a bit hidden. So let's look at at an example of that. Imagine that the question was to add the square root of 2 to the square root of 8. Well, the square root of 8 has inside it a square integer as a factor, and that's going to make all the difference. It's not adding apples and pears, and let's just see how that works. 
the square root of 8 I can write as the square root of 4 times 2. The square root of 4 times 2 I can write as root 4 times root 2. And then you see I have my original root 2 plus 2 lots of root 2. And so the answer to the question the square root of 2 plus the square root of 8 hidden inside there is adding as it were, an apple and two other apples. So we have three lots of root two. Let's do a slightly more complicated example. Imagine we were given something like the square root of 10 minus three lots of the square root of 40 plus five lots of the square root of 90. Now at face value again, you might think, well, I'm trying to add apples and pears, but if you're given a question such as this, it's almost certain that hidden away in here are square factors which enable you to really be dealing only with apples, as it were. The key will be in the smallest third in the problem. Here it's root 10. So if I look at these other thirds and the integer within, can I see that it's 10 times a square number? And indeed I can. 40 is 10 times 4. 4 is a square number, 90 is 10 times 9, 9 is a square number. So let's just do this separately then, let's just work out the square root of 40 is the square root of 4 times 10, which I can break down as the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. Because 4 is a square number, its square root is an integer, this is just 2 root 10. Likewise, the square root of 90 is the square root of 9 times 10, which is the square root of 9 times the square root of 10. Notice here we're just breaking up this larger square root into a product of smaller square roots, as we saw in the last tutorial. 9 is a square number, its square root is 3, and so I have 3 root 10. So this original problem then can be recast as root 10 minus 3 lots of square root of 40. Well, the square root of 40 is 2 root 10. So I have minus 3 times 2 times root 10. And then I have 5 lots of root 90, and 90 is 3 root 10. So I have 5 lots of 3 lots of root 10. So this is root 10 minus 6 root 10 plus 15 root 10. I have a simple sum only involving root 10. I have 1 lot minus 6 gives me negative 5 plus 15 gives me 10. So the answer would be 10 root 10. So that's quite a complicated example but something that you might see on the exam where you have to essentially identify the sort of the apple, if you will, the smaller third, and then look for that factor in the other thirds along with square numbers, and then you can take some simple steps to simplify. Finally then, with division as the last arithmetic operation, um, something that you're often asked to do on the exam is to remove um, thirds from the denominator. So let's imagine we have a fraction. Now note this is not a rational number because a rational number is a fraction of integers. But let's imagine we have a fraction involving both integers and thirds. This will be de facto an irrational number. Let's imagine we have 2 over the square root of 3. And you may be asked a question, write this as a fraction whose denominator is an integer or a rational number. The technique for doing this is to remove the third from the denominator by multiplying this fraction by 1. But remember, you can always write 1 as anything you wish divided by itself, as long as that anything you wish is not 0, but anything other than 0 divided by itself. And here we're going to choose that to be root 3. So we're going to write 1 as 
root 3 divided by itself. This is just 1. So we're not changing the value of this fraction. But by writing it in this way, we can now do a fraction multiplication. So on the top, I have 2 times root 3. And on the bottom, I have root 3 times root 3. And you thereby see the point of this exercise that in the denominator now, we have the third multiplied by itself, which will give us an integer. So we have 2 root 3 divided by 3. And so we've writ rewritten this fraction where the third was in the denominator as a fraction where now the denominator is an integer or a rational number. Let's just do one more example. Imagine we have 4 over the square root of 7. So again, we just multiply this by 1, but we choose 1 to be that third in the denominator divided by itself. Then we have a simple fraction multiplication. We have 4 lots of root 7 on top. We have root 7 times root 7 on the bottom. And this therefore becomes 4 root 7 divided by 7. As a very um, uh, a brief final point, um, when we speak of thirds, um, we can think of what are called higher roots, so cube roots or fourth roots and such. Um, I think it's wise to just know some of these. So instead of thinking about square numbers, let's think of cubic numbers, numbers whose cube root is an integer. Um, you can generate these most easily by just writing a few integers down. So let me take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for example. I'm just going to shift the paper up a wee bit there. Let's take the cube of these numbers. So the cube of 1 is 1. The cube of 2, so 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. And 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So these integers are worth just bearing in mind that their cube roots are the integers above. And we would write that as the square root sign, but with a little 3 there, which indicates the cube root. And so the cube root of 1 is 1, the cube root of 8 is 2, namely um, 2 times 2 times 2 is the integer within 8, the cube root of 27 is 3, the cube root of 64 is 4, and the cube root of 125 is 5. And just for the sake of it, let's just do um, the fourth roots of all of these as well. Um, I'll just do it quickly. So the fourth root of 1, any root of 1 is 1. So 1 um, multiplied by itself 4 times just gives 1. The fourth root of 16 is 2. The fourth root of 81 is 3. The fourth root of, I have to get this right, 256 is 4, and the fourth root of 625 is 5. So I don't think you need to know all of these, but again, you can see that there are certain integers which do have special properties. In this case, 625 has a fourth root, which is an integer, as does 256, 81, 16, and so on. But in nearly all the examina examination questions that you'll come across at the National 5 or equivalent levels, you'll be um, looking at square roots, which we've covered um, in these tutorials and looking at the arithmetic thereof. So that is the topic of thirds. I hope this has been helpful and thank you for your attention and I'll see you next time.